and then we create a bunch of workers. And that basically creates our infrastructure on Equinix Metal. That is the starting point. Uh, Gerhard Lazu, software engineer at Dagger, and Kyle Penfound, a solutions engineer at Dagger as well. And uh, yeah, they're going to present our first talk here is largely Dagger on, on Equinix Metal. Is that, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Thank Perfect. you. Perfect. Do you want to introduce yourselves briefly, a, a quick background or, or that sort of thing, and then you can kind of take it from here? Yeah, I'm Gerhard Lazu. I'm a uh, software engineer at Dagger. If you want to learn more about me, you can go to gerhard.io and check out some of the interesting things, talks, whatever you takes your fancy. Kyle? Yeah, um, I'm Kyle, Solutions Engineer at Dagger. Um, I spend a lot of time looking at different types of CI CD pipelines and uh, figuring out how you know, Dagger can help uh, make them better. Awesome. Well, that sounds great. Well, why don't we uh, get to go ahead and start your uh your time. I will, I will, I will disappear hopefully. And then you can take it from here. Yeah, we're ready. <laughs> All Thank right, you. Go for it. So I started sharing my screen, just double checking that everyone can see that. It looks good to me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you for, thank you for everyone that joined. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, and we'll get straight to it. Have you ever wanted to run your CI CD pipeline locally? exactly as it runs on your CI platform of choice. I did, and it never worked well. Um, what about running the same pipeline across multiple CI platforms to see which one suits you better? While I hold not one, but two PhDs in YAML, translating YAML between CI platforms is not something that I recommend. In today's talk, we will learn about CI CD pipelines as code, and see my preferred way of running them on Equinix Metal. I'm Gerhard Lazu, and I enjoy infrastructure. So at a high level, this is what we will um, be looking at today. There's GitHub Actions right at the top. Uh, there's Equinix Metal, and everything happens within Equinix Metal. Um, within it, we are using Talos to set up our operating systems, the networking, everything that we need. Inside Talos, obviously running Kubernetes, and uh, there's an actions runner, which uh, give us self-hosted runners. And within the self-hosted runners, we run Dagger engines as daemon sets. And this is where all the magic happens. So why Equinix Metal? Well, for me, picking your favorite CPU, like for example, the five gigahertz Intel Xeon, even though it's been around for a while, I still think it's amazing. That's the uh, C3 small, amazing, amazing host. But you can also choose the latest AMD Epic or the 80 core Ampere Ultra, which I think is very nice. You have a very broad choice of the CPUs that you know you want. Uh, there are also fast local NVMe disks, and I pay, pay special attention to those because they can make a big difference, especially when you have any caching going on or any workloads going on that uh, require storage. Uh, it becomes very important. And while attached disks are okay, if you want the ultimate speed, really, you need to go for the fast local NVMe disks. Dedicated networks, they make a big difference. So dedicated per host, you can go 20 gigabits or 100 gigabits. It's crazy just how much low latency, high throughput networking you can get from Equidix Metal, which I appreciate. And something which is especially important for me, I can pick my own operating system. And we'll learn about this a bit later. Now, I talked about this as length. It's been, I think, about a year and a half ago with uh, Zach Smith. Uh, it was the Ship It Show, episode 29. You can see a link there about the infrastructure advantage. And I dig into some of these details a bit deeper. So why Dagger.io? Well, Dagger.io for me represents, honestly, the ideal CI-CD experience. And I not only work on Dagger, but I also use Dagger in a couple of contexts. And I find it especially helpful when it comes to running the same pipelines anywhere. So I'm starting with my local host, but also taking to the CI. I mean, I want my pipeline to run the same, no YAML foo, no YAML magic, just plain, plain code. And I have a choice. I can go Go, which is my favorite, but there is also Python, there's Node.js, and a couple of experimental languages like Rust or Elixir. So yes, if you want to write your CI CD pipeline in Rust and use all the primitives, you can. Now, 
something which some call this like the day two operations, but really it's like what happens after you get those pipelines running. So what about the caching? Like how well does it work? What about the observability? And well, luckily we take those boxes too. Uh, Dagger ticks all those boxes too, just to make it clear. So I'm going to turbo through this part. Um, there's a couple of prerequisites, like how would I run Dagger Engine on Equinix Metal? So first of all, you will need the Dagger CLI, and we'll see why a bit later. Um, there's the Metal CLI to provision instances, and also the Talos CTL. These are the three, you absolutely have to have those to be able to follow through with this demo. There's a couple of extras as well, which just make life easier. Uh, directory env, and I think most of us already use it, just for getting secrets, environment variables in your um, environment. Uh, the kubectl or kubectl, however you want to pronounce it, and k9s, which is my ncurses interface, my interface of choice to Kubernetes. So again, I'm going to go through this really quick because by the way, uh, this will be available as a recording, so you can play it back, you can ask me more questions, it's not a problem. Uh, and really, this is like not the, the most valuable part, but it's an important one. So these are, there are like five steps to get Dagger set up on Equinix Metal, and this is from the very beginning. So the first step is to generate the deployment config. We create a control plane config and a worker config. Then step number two, we actually create the control planes, and that's where the Metal uh, CLI comes into play. And we create one control plane, but you should also be able to create more, not a problem. And then we create a bunch of workers. And that basically creates our infrastructure on Equinix Metal. That is the starting point. Five minutes later, if you were to run this, you'd be able to see these three devices. Uh, so there are three servers. Uh, we have one control plane. Again, maybe you want more. Uh, and you should have more, to be honest. Three is uh, where the magic starts. And you can create as many workers as you need. In this case, we only created two. So once you have this infrastructure provision, the next step is to finalize your config. Uh, that's basically the local config. You want to have a bunch of things locally. Uh, you want to bootstrap the actual cluster. That's where Talos CTL bootstrap comes into play. And then you can observe the machines. Uh, Talos CTL, the CLI makes it easy to look at the dashboard, to look basically interact with the hosts in a very nice way. And it does not involve SSH. And that is a key. So five minutes later, when all these nodes provision, this is what we end up with. We, have, we end up with three nodes. These are Kubernetes node. We have one control plane where no workloads are placed except the system workloads. And we have two worker nodes, which support um, any type of workload, including Dagger. That's where Dagger runs. Um, to get Dagger deployed, uh, Cert Manager, that's a prerequisite. This is required by the actions runner. And then we deploy the actions runner. There's a gotcha. You need to apply it server side because the manifests are so long. And there's also uh, the GitHub personal access token, which is required for the runners to register with, um, with various repositories and to actually be able to run, uh, to act as self-running um, workers. And lastly, we just deploy the engine. And because it is a daemon set in this case, it is implementation detail, you'll always get one per node. So wherever there are some actions runners, there will always be Dagger. And again, if you're curious, you can look in the manifest. Again, that's not important right now. What is important is the end result. So what does the end result look like? So K9S, I mentioned about this earlier. Uh, I will look at all the workloads. So maybe we start at the nodes. Uh, so we have the control plane. And we can see this has been running for almost seven days. We have two workers. And if I go on the workers, you'll see that each worker has this dagger daemon set and dagger deployments. So this is an instance of the dagger engine. And then we also have a bunch of runners. So any runners running on this node, they have access to this dagger engine. And we'll see why that is important a bit later. Um, there's a bunch of other things that you can look at. But really, I suppose this is the most interesting one if we go to all the pods. We can see everything that's deployed in the cluster. So we have two workers, two Dagger engines, and a bunch of runners, the self-hosted runners. So a question which I was thinking I was preparing this demo is, could we have wrapped all these steps in a pipeline? And the answer is yes. And if I had more time to prepare this demo, I think that's what I would have done. But it's always good to see the building blocks and the building steps and how we get there. So that's why I wanted to share that. So this brings me to my next question, and this is one for Kyle, which is what GitHub Actions workflow should we use as a starting point? Kyle, this is over to you. Excellent. So let's uh, hold our breaths for a second. I tend to switch to my screen. And 
Let me know. Can you see me? Can you see my screen at all? Either one. Am I frozen? Yes. Yes. Now, now, yeah, I can see it. Okay, perfect. Um, great. So, uh, yeah, when we're thinking about what, what uh, GitHub Actions workflow we should use to kind of demonstrate this um, that you're running on Equinix and so on, um, we landed on Go Releaser. Uh, so Go Releaser is a popular open source project. Uh, a lot of people use it for building and releasing Go projects. Um, and you can see they have quite a bit of stars, great project. Um, and so if you look at the contribution workflow uh, today, um, if you wanted to contribute to Go Releaser, what you do is um, you know, install task, make sure you have the proper version of Go. And then you have a number of these that are other dependencies that you need on your machine. Uh, cosign, Docker, in order to run the Go Releaser test, it needs uh, Docker running that spins up and, and publishes a bunch of containers, uh, GPG, so on. Um, and so if we look at you know, our uh, basic contribution workflow, fork the repo, clone it, install task, and then hopefully all these things work the same uh, on your machine as they do in CI and whatever uh, production environments we expect them to work in, right? Uh, but the truth is that's not always the case. So let's look at, um, you know, what CI looks like for Go Releaser itself. And, and one of the reasons that uh, we figured this was a good candidate for this example was, you know, this build workflow, uh, we can see usually takes about, uh, you know, 10 or 11 minutes. Um, and if we look at the actual GitHub Actions workflow YAML for Go Releaser, uh, we install all these dependencies that we saw listed on that, uh, on that contribution page. So, you know, after we check out the project, uh, we install task, uh, Kimu, Buildx, Snapcraft, a whole bunch of dependencies. And then finally, uh, we can do that, that build and, um, and actually run our tests at the end here. Uh, so what does this look like uh, in Dagger, right? So if I pop open my code here, this is the same pipeline that we just looked at in YAML, but converted to Dagger. So I, I did a lot to make sure we didn't touch Go Releaser or change it in any way. We just use it exactly as is. So we want to bring all those dependencies, all those things we saw in GitHub Actions into this Dagger pipeline. Um, and so don't worry about like fully grokking all of this code here, but this is a uh, written in Go uh, using the Dagger SDK. And this pipeline here is exactly what we just looked at in the ML, right? So we can see you know, we initialize our builder and I'll kind of uh, peek at that in a second here. And then we can see familiar things like we're setting up Go, Cosign, all those dependencies that we looked at. Uh, making sure that Docker is configured so that we can run those tests. And then finally, we're going to go test. Uh, if I look at this builder real quick, again, I mentioned, you know, we, we want to make sure that we can run this whole thing exactly as is without changing Go Releaser at all. And so the goal here was to mimic the GitHub Actions runner as closely as possible. So we start with the new Ubuntu base. Uh, we install a number of packages, set up the proper user permissions, uh, do all these things to make sure it mimics uh, the Ubuntu latest runner on GitHub. Uh, and that way, you know, we didn't have to change any of these assumptions within the test logic that assume a very particular environment. Now, the great thing about that is, you know, when we looked at that uh, contribution workflow before and think about how it runs in CI, now we're actually merging those together, right? Because we have the exact same configuration when we run it locally and in CI. Uh, and speaking of which, um, you know, what does it actually look like to run in CI? So if I wanted to run this exact pipeline in GitHub, we have this uh, simple, you know, YAML that really just executes the pipeline. So we looked at our YAML before that was the entire, um, workflow of setting up dependencies, all these things. This just runs that Go pipeline that we just looked at. And so, you know, we can see, again, it's written in Go, so we need Go to run our entry point, and we just run Go run. Um, and so, you know, Gerhard just went through all the steps of setting up these GitHub runners on Equinix. So what does this look like to run, not just on a GitHub hosted runner, but actually in the runners that we just configured? Well, if I expand this little guy right here, um, this is the key difference right here, right? The runs on. So those runners that we just saw Gerhard deploy uh, have this tag self-hosted. So if we look at our runners in our GitHub repo, we can actually see 
uh, these runners are registered and we can run things on them. And so you have this self-hosted runner. And again, it's doing the exact same steps down here uh, with one other configuration to point at the appropriate Docker socket uh, for this custom configuration we have. So what does this actually look like uh, you know, when it runs? Um, so he here's a build uh, with the project that we were just looking at or the pipeline we were just looking at. Uh, we can see that on GitHub job about 10 minutes. So really it's it's pretty similar to the existing workflow that we saw in Go Release Your CI. Um, and then we see on metal 20 seconds. Now that's a suspiciously no, low number, right? And the reason for that is uh, because of the way that Dagger works, we actually have this built-in caching. So in this run, nothing changed with our actual pipeline or the contents of our pipeline. So the entire thing was cached. And so we don't have to repeat any work that's already been done. Uh, so that's probably not as interesting uh, in terms of comparing benchmarks, right? Because we didn't actually do any work here. So let's look at uh, actually running something meaningful. And so I have this other commit where, uh, you know, before we we're building uh, go releaser 1.18.2. Um, and so I made a commit where I just said, build this shot, which is actually the latest commit in GitHub. And so let's look at the run for that now. Now, again, in GitHub, we can see it's roughly the same, about 12 minutes. But now on Metal, we have two minutes and 12 seconds. So all the work we did before, if I jump back to code here, of you know setting up all these dependencies and installing all these tools, that part is already cached because we're not changing any part of that pipeline. But the part where we're actually running go, go mod tidy, possibly go build and go test, those we're going to have to do again because we have a different version of Go Releaser being tested now. And so if we hop back to this, we can see if we jump into this, our actual pipeline execution took a minute and 51 seconds this time. Uh, and so again, all that setup is cached. But if we go down to the end here, we'll see a bunch of test output and uh, our test pass at the end. So yeah, the, the great thing is here, you know, we've uh, configure caching on this uh, higher performance machine and we can reduce that CI time from again 12 and a half minutes down to two minutes for a completely different commit of the project um, and I think with that I can pass it back to Gerhard. Can you see my screen share? All good? All right. I, I can hear you now. There cool. we go. Yep, we're good. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So this brings us near the end. Um, and one of the questions that you, again, may be wondering is why run Dagger pipelines on Equinix Metal? I already talked about the infrastructure advantage, and you can go and listen to that if you want. But really, for me, it is the best combination of raw hardware and containers. And you have a lot of flexibility and, and power as well. And one of the key takeaways for me is that if it's not an API call, then it's a container and you don't have anything else. Now, you've seen me at the beginning use the CLI to set a few things up. And as I said, that was done for speed and expediency, you know, real world limitations uh, when I was preparing for this demo. But to be honest, I'm, I would like to follow up on that and see if I can make it even, even better. Um, wrap it in some API calls as well, uh, which you know don't necessarily run on my on my terminal. Okay, so what comes next? Well, one of the first steps for me was to make this talk and all the code available as a container. So you can pull all of this down from registry.dagger.io forward slash equinix dash demo dash day dash twenty twenty three. So I'll do a control C here. And you'll see that I was running it, the slides, as you've seen me exactly this way. And this puts me at the beginning, so I'll go all the way to the end, but this is it. So my slides were in the container. I will follow up in the Dagger community call. Uh, and I think there's a couple of improvements I would like to make to this. So you're more than welcome to join. I would like to blog about this experience because it's been really nice uh, integrating with Equinix. Uh, I really liked a bunch of things and especially the speed, um, the networking, uh, uh, the local disks, um, a 
bunch of other things. And um, we would also like to add uh, how to run Dagger engines on Kubernetes on the docs. That's something on my list too. Uh, last thing is to experiment with different CPUs and disks and something called Magic Cache, which is part of that Dagger Cloud. And uh, that's when things get very interesting when it comes to distributed caching. Uh, but yeah, you can uh, you can follow up on that either via Discord or um, via, via GitHub. There's a couple of interesting discussions and pull requests. So another interesting thing, and I think the last interesting thing, if I was to come back into this talk and if I was to change the entry point, uh, there's NVIM as well installed. And if I do NVIM and dot, then not only you see the slides, which these are the slides, but you get all the code that we used, that's in Dagnix, the code that we used to build, for example, the image. This one right here, the slides. And again, it's using a Dagger pipeline. And you can see what went, what went into it. And also uh, for Talos, I mentioned all the manifests. So everything that we used, it's in Dagger. That's for the engine. You have the cert manager, the actions runner. So everything we configured, it is distributed in the image, which you can get from the registry. And with that, thank you very much for watching. That's us. Awesome. Thank you for presenting. That was uh, was fantastic. It looked pretty straightforward to set up. But first, I want to know everything about the slides because now I want to know how all these slides run in a container and I have to figure out if I need to run slides in a container now. But that's a different story altogether, I suppose. Um, yeah, I, uh, I love that you had a good time on Equinix as well. Very good to know. What was the... Uh, I mean, I, as, as former, like complete network nerd, I love all the networking bits, but uh, mm -hmm. what did you enjoy most digging into uh, with Dagger on the platform? So for me, it was the speed really. Mm -hmm. Like a uh, 20 gigabit network that you all get yourself <laughs> makes a big difference. You get real used to it real fast. <laughs> Everyone's on cloud these days and that's okay. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. But really like to have 20 gigabit to yourself, it's a yeah. whole new game. A hundred gigabit, you know? Yeah. And uh, it makes a huge difference. Also, also locations, like d depending mm -hmm. on where you place your host, and by the way, with Equinix Metal, you have the choice, you can get really low latency, consistently high throughput. I know it's really difficult to achieve low latency and high throughput, but you can get it from a networking perspective. And the disks, oh, wow. Yeah. So Yeah. The uh, and I'm I'm sure locations and networking. If you really want to have fun and mess with BGP with it all too, you can mm. really get some fun. Th that 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 edge networking makes a big difference. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and um, I think Talos as well. I mean, you offer Talos one of the options, which for me it was important. So mm -hmm. with other providers, it's a bit more difficult to get Talos running. I mean, you can right, especially if you're good with DD and you're not yeah. afraid of terminals. But you really <laughs> want to do that? Maybe not. So. Yeah, yeah. I really appreciated that. So those two things, actually three things, if I'm counting correctly, made it a no-brainer. And then I could invest time, like making my my slides really nice. <laughs> and you, you know, like we shared like that love uh, with others. We put it in the container, so we could spend extra time on things that really mattered. And uh, Kyle was able to do a bunch of things because you know, like things were easy, and that's what made the talk great. Like a bunch of things that used to be hard are now easy, so we nice. could spend more time on the fun things. Like, you know, putting more love in the slides or packaging or things like that. <laughs> Anything from you, Kyle? Yeah, I mean, that was the, the performance too. I mean, just looking at those numbers um, at the end of, you know, what happens in a, a hosted runner versus running on metal. I'm um, even with the, the build and test on cache. Uh, crazy. Awesome. Great. I'm, I'm glad to hear that everything uh, went well for y'all. Um yeah, I was trying to think if there was was something else. So uh, all of this, did you say this whole presentation you made available online as well that folks could pull the code down? What was yeah, the link much. for that one more time? You probably said it, but just to remind folks where they can find it all. It's registry.dagger.io forward slash equinix dash demo dash day dash 2023. All right, cool. Oh, why did I type it wrong? Equinix. Regis Equinix. Registry. Registry. Oh, Equinix. Yeah. Equinix dash demo dash day dash 2023. How did we? Let's, all right. I'm getting it. Maybe I'm typing it wrong. <laughs> okay. Let me see if I can drop it in the chat. There is a private chat here. 
So registry dot dagger dot io. And by the way, this is a container image, so you need to pull it down as a container. You can't. Oh, maybe that's what I'm trying to do. That see, yeah. that's what I'm doing. It is I a was container. Trying to, I was trying to look mm -hmm. at it. Just I wanted to click buttons. Yes. Yeah. All right. Cool. So folks can pull that down as a container then. Uh, as a container. Registry.dagger. I, I will type it here. So it's registry.dagger.io, or I'll leave that part off. You Because then it'll be a URL. But if I don't type it, it won't think it's a URL. So it'll be equinix dash demo dash day dash 2023. Okay. Yep. Cool. Folks should be able to, we'll get it from there. Um, awesome. So cool. Well, thank you for your time and uh, and presenting. And uh, it's been wonderful to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.